Hey everybody, Mr. McIntosh here, and in today's video, this is going to be part two of my Windows 10 Virtualization on Apple Silicon Mac series. A lot has changed since the first video that I put out, making things a lot easier for you to set up the VM. We're going to talk about ACVM by Chaos T. He put together a simple launcher that you will be able to use to start the VM instead of running multiple commands. It's so much easier now. In part three, I'm going to talk about UMT on another GUI application that will help you run Windows 10. And on my part four, I'm gonna show you how to configure it all together so you can pick the best one to set up networking and file share to be able to transfer your files between your Mac and the VM. Let's jump in and get started. It's only been a couple days since my first video came out, but this is showing how fast things move when people are working together to make things easier for users. As you could see in my first video, you had to run a lot of different commands and cut and paste copy blocks and like that don't get me wrong that was fine it all worked you guys got windows 10 running but we had a couple hitches along the way and there were some problems there things have come out to make things a lot easier and one of them is chaos t's acvm and this is a great little simple launcher for running arm 64 version of windows 10 on your apple silicon mac and it makes it very easy so we're going to jump right in and show you how to get that running on your apple silicon so this is the page and i'll include this in the description how to download ACVM. So you can see here is the releases and this here is the latest release. So we'll want to click on that and it'll bring us to the releases page. And again at the time of this taping it's 104. I've got an issue here that I put in that the screen resolution does not save across restarts. Hopefully this gets put uh, picked up. There's already a pull request for that to be done. So what that means is that when we set the screen resolution in the boot settings after you reboot it doesn't get reset. We'll go over that more later, but I just wanted to kind of go over that before we continued. So let's go back to the releases page here and let's download the ACVM zip. Okay, it's unzipped down in our downloads folder. We'll click on the downloads folder here. We'll open up in Finder and you can see that the application is right here already unzipped. All we need to do is drag it over to the applications folder and it automatically brings us to applications and we just got to start it up and we'll click open. It said we're sure we wanted to download this. We did and we want to open it. And here's the launcher. What's great about this is that we don't have to worry about copying and pasting big commands into the terminal to be able to get the QEMU started. We can look, we can change the amount of cores, we can change the RAM, we can drag our Windows 10 ARM VM right into this main image part. And if we wanted to add in a CD image like an ISO, for an installer, all we do is drag it into here and it automatically mounts it for us in Windows 10 when we're done. How cool is that? So let's jump in right now and get our VM file and we'll drag it over. So I've got that on my desktop here and I've got it set up between two because I wanted to let you guys understand that this file here, we're not actually installing Windows. And this is the kind of cool thing about this file here, this VHDX, if you don't know already, is that when you load this, you're actually editing this file and you're making it bigger. If you install applications, it's not you're not creating and you can do that, but you're not creating a virtual hard drive and then using an ISO to install. It's already installed in this VM. And when you fire it up, you're editing this on the fly. So if you want to keep a copy of the original one, that might be a good idea. So if you want to keep this on a hard drive or in a different location, do that so you can always start over if something gets screwed up. So this is my new file. So all we need to do is move, drag this over here. We'll drag this. We'll minimize this so we can see a little bit better here. And we'll drag this right over to our main image. And now we've got our main image file. Okay, all we need to do is hit start. Now to change that resolution, when you get in here, click inside and hit escape, and you can immediately jump into like the BIOS or the settings of the QEMU virtual machine. All we need to do is go down to the device manager, you hit the down arrow, hit enter, and we wanna go to the platform configuration here. And this is, it defaults to 640 by 480. All we need to do is click enter here and then go tab down to 1024 by 768. We will hit escape. It says, do we wanna save? Yes. We'll hit escape again to bring us back to the main menu and we hit reset. And there we go, look at this. We're in 1024 by 468 and we're starting the system. It's gonna immediately boot us into the setup of Windows 10 first time. 
I'm going to skip past this. We don't, we need to go over this. And when I'm done, we'll be in Windows and we can go through a little bit of okay, more. We're on this. the desktop. Windows 10 is loaded. We got it installed. I wanted to show you, I talked a little bit about the bugs in the early setup of QEMU, how it was taking up CPU cores at idle. There was a patch that was put out and it was actually implemented into this version here. And I wanted to show you the activity monitor at idle. It's all fixed now. So the ACVM of this version has those fixes in it. So we don't have to worry about that taking up a lot of CPU time. It just sits there at idle about 50% CPU and that's absolutely perfect, right? As you can see here, the OS runs really great. It's really responsive. Everything works great. And I wanted to show you how to shut down too. The best thing to do to shut down is just to bring the system down like this. Just click shut down. The VM will shut down properly. You wait for a second and it will close out here. And there it is, done. Now, this is what I was talking about hopefully that that request goes in and it's pulled in to be fixed because all we would need to do is hit start and the resolution would be fine again but if we hit start here as you can see the resolution does not change back to what it was supposed to be so we would have to go back into the settings and change that every time it's not that big of a deal but by the time you're watching this this might already get fixed in the releases so if we go in the releases you'll see the release is 104 maybe maybe five fixes that that is ACVM. This is working very well. It's super simple to use and start up a lot simpler than the first video that we went over and all those different steps that we had to run into. The next video that I'm going to put out is going to go over UTM, another GUI wrapper that's going to allow you to run Windows 10 on Apple Silicon. And again, it's really great too. And there's a lot of customizable functions in there to be able to load ISOs and USB drives and stuff like that. And then part four, we'll go into the configuration on how to do file sharing and internet setup. We'll talk to you in the next video, guys. Thank you very much.